as you may have seen in the title, ladies and gentlemen, it is officially Disney Vote Eve, and I am rather excited because one way or another, the potential future of Disney will be decided tomorrow, or at least it'll technically be decided by midnight tonight on a Tuesday, because that's when all of the final voting has to go in. All everybody's votes have to be in by Tuesday midnight tonight before the Wednesday meeting, right? Now, the question is, as of right now, some of the reports we've heard out there throughout the rumor mill is that over over half of the votes are currently in. Now, this is all rumor mill. This is from Industry Insiders is how some of the mainstream outlets quoted this. But this, I did believe, come from like the Hollywood Reporter or the Rap or somebody like that. Yeah, here we go. From Variety. Uh, we've got it from here on Variety. Disney and CEO Bob Iger have reportedly pulled into the lead for the 12 board candidate to win re-election with activist investor Nelson Peltz trailing. More than half of the votes have been cast ahead of the April 3rd shareholders meeting. Now, this is more than half. Now, what do they mean by more than half? We don't know. Could it be 51%? Could it be 52%? Could it be 60%? We don't know for sure. But it also could be just 51%. There could still be a lot of the vote left out there for Peltz and Perlmutter. Now, we knew last week the industry insiders were saying that Peltz was currently in the lead. So, we'll have to see what happens. But this is some interesting headlines from, like, The Wrap. A shareholder revolt put Bob Iger in power. Another one could strip him of it. Now, this is from The Wrap. Now, given The Wrap is one of the ones that's not owned by the same company as Variety, as Deadline, as The Hollywood Reporter, because Variety, Deadline, and Hollywood Reporter are all owned by the same company. But let's check out both of these kind of articles. Let's get out some of the updates, and let's see where they're going for things right now. So, we're going to check out this article from Variety, see what this all has to say about this, and see what they think and where we're going as far as the current report and what the industry insiders are saying now as versus what they were saying last week. So, let's check this out. Disney's board candidates pull ahead of activist investor Nelson Peltz with more than half of the votes cast report. Um, so do, 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 we already talked about that. So two of Disney's institutional investors, BlackRock, which owns about 4.2% of its outstanding shares, and T. Roy Price, which is 0.5%, which are not, is not a lot considering how much more is out there, are supporting the company's slate of directors. It includes Iger, the journal citing anonymous sources. So they're saying right here is according to, this is according to the Wall Street Journal. Um, Disney CEO Bob Iger pulled into the lead for each of their 12 board with activist investor Nelson Peltz trailing after more than half of the shareholder votes have been cast out of the Mouse House's April 3rd meeting, according to the Wall Street Journal. So this is Wall Street Journal's insiders. So the Wall Street Journal's article did not indicate how big a lead Disney's 12-member board slate reportedly has over Peltz at this juncture. According to the journal's report, with about 20% of shares voted as of late last week, Peltz had been leading the race to replace incumbent Disney board member Mercury Laguanza, right? While Trion's other nominee, CFO Jay Reloso, was was trailing, which this could be an interesting thing. If they end up trying to split the baby here and we end up with Pelts on the board and not ex-CFO Jay Rosalo, which I would actually like to see him on the board as well, I don't know how much of an impact this is going to happen. It probably will just end up stopping, uh, trying to help stop the bleeding inside of Disney, but I don't think you'll see a major cultural shift happen anytime soon if only Pelts gets on the board. So we'll see what happens on Wednesday. A T. Roy Price spokesman confirmed that more than 99% of the shares the asset management firm owns have voted for all of Disney's recommended nominees, including two incumbents whose board seats are being challenged, yada, yada, yada. Reps for Disney and Trion did not respond to requests for comment on the report as BlackRock spokesman also declined to comment. So obviously this is one of the things that's going to happen. So this is what's going to be interesting, right? So this is Disney's 2024 annual meeting of shareholders will be held virtually Wednesday, April 3rd, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific. So our goal for that one right there is that should be like noon hour time, I believe, here in the central time right there so our goal right here is to live stream this and go over and see as this comes in so if you haven't already come join us over on rumble follow us hit that like button do all that kind of fun stuff over there because we will be live streaming the shareholders meeting exclusively over there on rumble and it's going to be great rumble the common nerd it's going to be awesome it's going to be wonderful it's going to be fabulous and i'm going to be really excited to see how this goes whether we end up declaring disney dead or we end up declaring disney might actually have a change of tune i have no idea but we're going to find out tomorrow so everybody says right here, it strongly encourages them to do so by 11.59 Eastern on April 2nd. The vote counts will be announced on the April 3rd meeting. The ultimate outcome of the Foxy Pride is Foxy Pride, Foxy, bleh, bleh, Foxy Pride. The proxy fight is still up in the air. Overall, individual Disney shareholders own more than one-third of outstanding shares, making them a significant factor in deciding the board election. That means all of the individual average person, average Disney shareholder out there still has a third of the company and the third of the outstanding shares that haven't voted yet. This could be very interesting. So let's look at a little bit of the history of the Walt Disney Company because this is something very interesting. Now, there's not going to be a whole lot of this. We're not going to be able to get very far in it because it's a pro article and I'm not paying the rap for any of this nonsense, but 
A shareholder of revolt put Bob Iger in power. Another one could strip him of it. Two decades after the Save Disney campaign led by Roy Disney, Iger finds himself in the middle of a new quagmire. The showdown between Disney CEO Bob Iger and an activist investor group culminating at Wednesday's annual meeting won't be the first time the entertainment giant has stared in a shareholder revolt. In fact, the last time this happened, Iger emerged the big winner. Two decades ago, Disney's board stripped Iger's predecessor, Michael Eisner, of his chairman title following the Save Disney campaign led by founder Walt Disney's nephew, Roy E. Disney. Boy, I bet Roy's regretting that now, ain't he? Uh, I guess he's dead now, but still, I'm sure he's regretting it from heaven. And his investor partner, Stanley Gold. As the smoke cleared, the Disney board handed the CEO reins to Iger, then Iser's number two in 2005. Now, this is funny because the guys out there that are currently saying split the vote and vote for Pelts, but don't vote for the former CFO are the exact same ones that recommended that Eisner be gone and Iger replace him. So now we're seeing something go on where they're trying to split the baby now with this kind of thing. So tomorrow's going to be very interesting. Wednesday is going to be very, very interesting to see how this vote goes. Because like I said, this is going to decide the future of the fate of the Walt Disney Company. And with so many individual shareholders out there with a third of their votes still out there being completely and totally unannounced and completely and totally unvoted, it could be a very, very interesting vote. So if you're a Disney investor out there, if you're a Disney shareholder and you've seen this before the vote happens, go out there and vote. Personally, if I was a Disney shareholder, I'd be voting for Pelts and Rus- Ruffalo, or see the CFO, Ruffalo, not Ruffalo, too many Russos inside of the Walt Disney Company. But either way, go vote for Pelts and his nomination. That would just be my personal opinion. But it's your share, you decide, you do what you want. But I'm just saying right now, tomorrow is going to decide the future of Disney, one way or the other, good, bad, or in somewhere in the middle, we're going to find out. And it's going to be very interesting whether or not we get to declare Disney dead on life support or somewhere as a warm corpse tomorrow. It's going to be a very interesting day, and it could mean the end of Bob Iger, if we're lucky. But we'll see what happens.